Hello and welcome to the 2021 Howick uh, British and European Car Show. We are here on a sunny, sunny day. It's absolutely lovely and I'm surrounded by uh, Italian cars. Behind me here is a Lancia Delta 80 Integrale. And next to that I think is the Evolution model, the other Integrale. Oh, quite interesting. And then actually behind, behind you, there's more Integrales. There's Integrales everywhere. But I guess the star of the show, and the Integrale that is probably the most special, is this one here, a 1986 Lance. Yeah, this is a very rare car, and it's also a homologation special, so this one was never rallied, or it was never meant to be rallied, it was a production car sold, and they had to sell 200 of these, if I remember correctly, to actually qualify to, to race in the World Rally Championships. And next to that is another homologation special, which is the um, Lancia Delta 037, I think it is. Uh, anyway, it's, it's also a homologation because it's painted in red rather than a racing car. And if you, uh, if you come here nicely, nicely, that both these cars have interiors so they they are they are somewhat racing spec but they're actually comfortable so that's that's very cool to see this car here absolutely amazing just truly wonderful and so is this car here absolutely spectacular just absolutely absolutely amazing to see it here now is this a real Stratos? That's a real question. This, this is a Stratos. So these are, these are actually for rally cars. This, this might be a real one. I'll take a look. It's hard to tell. Probably is a real one. Um, these are really cool too, to be honest. Oh no, it is. It is actually a So this is a real Lancia Stratos. It's hard to tell sometimes because there's so many replicas out there. But this is also a rally car. This is a free and I think it's a three and a half litre V6 Ferrari engine, an amazing car, absolutely stunning. The next to that is the um, Fulvia, that's a lovely car as well. So if we continue on, I'll show you some Absolutely. So if we continue on, I'll show you some other Lancers, which are absolutely amazing. Come with me. Oh, wow. This is a beta volume X. That's quite, quite amazing. If we continue around here, we're going to see some other beautiful Lancias. This is the this is the Lancia Monte Carlo. And that's quite cool as well. Oh look, this is absolutely stunning one. I'm not quite sure what quite like Lancia this one is, but it's a very nice one. Beautiful. Hello. Oh look, we uh, just uh, like, it's not cool. Let's have a look over here, shall we? <laughs> wow. It's huge. It is huge. Gorgeous. Wow. Uh, it's 1960. Uh, it's a 20. Just continue around here. Yeah. This car here is very rare because it's a Fulvia Sport S and it's actually got body a body by Zagato. So there were quite a few Fulvias. The Fulvia, normal Fulvia is a red one that was over there, but this one was bodied by Zagato, which makes it very rare and precious. And that you can see that it's just got all these sort of styling. And one of the Zagato hallmarks is this rear window treatment that they have here where it kind of goes up to a sharp point and then continues along. It just is spectacular. Another Italian mark, there is a coupe, there's a 124 Sider, then there's a, is this a 124, 124, that's really cool. Um, and another, I think this is an 850. Now, believe it or not, next to the coupe, which is also in this beautiful white colour, it's this pearlescent colour, is another Fulvia Sport, Lancia, Lancia Fulvia Sport Zagato. There's actually another one over there, somehow. Somehow, they've managed to get three of these extremely rare cars. This is one like Harry from Harry's Garage has. It's just beautiful. It has a different, slightly different interior than the other one. If we actually come around here, we will see another Lancia. So actually, if you look here, so what you can see here is, so this is a normal Fulvia and this is a Fulvia Sport. So there's quite a lot of differences between, say, this one here and this one here. The interior is the same though. It's got the same dashboard, so you know it's actually the same car, even though look, they look completely different. Um, but absolutely beautiful car there. 
Um, just so nice with its details and everything. Absolutely fantastic. There does seem to be quite an interesting Fiat over here as well. Which I think we might just have to take a look at because I haven't seen one like this Hello. Hello. So this is got the seat stereo in the middle. Oh, Fiat X19. Very interesting. Wow. Okay. Right, and last but not least, last but not least, we must look, of course, at the, well, you probably spotted it in the background, guys, and uh, don't worry, I did too. It stands out. Well, of course, we're talking about the Fiat Bambina. Now, I actually made a video of one of these many years ago on my channel, so it's, if you look back, you'll find it. It was actually a test for a car show, the, the um, presenter, but... It's fair, it's a bright blue with yellow flames, so, you know, go look that up. But if you come over here, you can actually see, well, um, yeah, the quintessential uh, big silver thing. Um, we all know what it is. The Kuntash Method Anniversary Edition, really, really nice, really special. Look at it, just look at it. It's the Lamborghini. Kuntash which in Italian means foie, that's basically what it means. So, quite cool car, interesting good interior, um, probably got good provenance. Hoovy from Hoovy's Garage has got one of these at the moment and it looks absolutely, absolutely amazing. Look at this wide low thing, it just looks just spectacular. It's of course the pin-up boy, and here it is. Hello and we are now in the MG section and there's quite a few MGBs and MG GTs and MGCs and this is an MGA. Um, my dad actually had one of these back in the day. It was not really Sprite, but basically the same car. Um, so one of these my dad had back in the day. Um, so quite a cute little car. Um, definitely worth having a look at. It's an MGB, very late MGB. Um, I think this is MG Magnet, I believe. Um, wow, what a cool dashboard. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at this square wooden. Oh, it's absolutely lovely. Look at that. Oh, it's fantastic. And uh, what a cute little car. Cute little car. Cute. Yes. Now, behind us, as you can see, there is a lot of minis. So there's some MGs here. And there's a ton of minis. Now, the later minis had the silver dashboards in them. And these quite fancy interiors, to be fair. Quite a lot fancy than the originals. But uh, yes, the, the Rover minis, and there's absolutely tons of them here. There's tons of minis. Here, just tons of minis. And these galore, we don't have time to even look at them all because we, we just wouldn't have the time of the video. But there's a lot of minis. Um, so these, of course, these ones here are the modern minis. We'll have a look at this one. Oh no, this one looks actually nice. I like the interior of this one. This one's really lovely. So this has got the walnut dashboard. You know, it's funny, this, this one here, especially with its silver dashboard, really reminds me of a Bentley. Um, and, I, and I'm not saying that being silly, it, it sort of looks like a Bentley interior and it's really nice. So, you know, I can certainly see the appeal of the car. It's, I mean, it's a great British sort of uh, kind of hatchback and it handles well and it's a great interior. So yeah, I can see why you'd want one. Of course, there's also something a bit more older and original 1979 Morris Minor. So you're going a bit older. Um, Oh look at that, these guys have a have a, a airbrush JC1354 of their of their money, that's pretty cool. I'm screwed. There's still some more minis over here. We're still walking past minis. There seems to be more minis here than any other car. There's certainly more minis here than there are Ferraris. 43. Um, 43. 43. 43 minis. minis. Oh that's an impre is that a is that a record? Uh, we had registered 60, so we were hoping for 60, oh, but, but, but we got 43. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome, thank you. No wow, 43 minis, guys. That's awesome. That's so cool. 
And the great thing about minis is that everyone's got a story about a mini. Everyone knows someone who's, who's owned a mini. That's awesome. Absolutely. Well, I spot something with my little eye that's red and Italian. Shall we go have a look? We'll come back to these, but I, I feel as if we're being drawn over to perhaps the most distinctive and evocative Italian mark of them all. Can you guess which it, what it is yet? They're red, there's a prancing horse. And of course, it is Ferrari, or Ferrari, depending on how Italian you want to sound. First up, we've had a lovely 348 TS with a removable Targa hard top. What a beautiful car in black leather interior. Absolutely spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. Moving on, we have, I think it's a 308 GTS. Crotch of Alvo, lovely car, and then bronzy brown, very nice, very different, interesting, interesting. Then we have a 355, lovely car, but I actually think that it almost looks not quite as amazing as the 348 T uh, Spider, which also looks amazing. We continue on, we've got another 348, another F355, and then we have uh, newer model, is it a 488 or a 488? Anyway, this is pretty cool. Three Ferrari Dinos. These houses are worth probably well over a million dollars each now, so C3 in here is pretty spectacular. Um, they just look so good. My, it's my I think it's um, my father's, oh, it's a lot of people's favourite Ferrari because of all the flowing lines and um they're just beautiful cars and the interesting thing about dinos is that they were never officially badged as ferrari so if you ever see one and it's got a ferrari badge on it that's been added by its owner because this was almost a separate market itself now this one has been around in new zealand for quite a while i remember seeing this in wellington once um and i love the wheels the wheels the old though they're just so spectacular so three dinos and we have the consensual Ferrari, the 80 Ferrari, the Testarossa, the Testarossa, however you want to pronounce it. This is a cool car, really different, really interesting. Um, really respectable. What an awesome car. Look at that huge flat 12, or box of 12 engine. Okay, so we're now going to look at some Fords. So behind me we have some Ford Poplars and Anglias. Those are really cool. We actually have a look at those. We come over here. With me. Uh, there's also this lovely RS2000 Escort. Um, there's also some Escorts behind us as well. But here is this really cool 8 and 10 uh, Ford. It's got an original New Zealand number plate on it. So you don't actually see number plates this old very often. But that's really cool. It's in great condition. If you come around, You'll see that the back is fitted out with Okay, so if we continue on, we're going to see some awesome other cool cars. So there's lots of Ford Escorts here. So if you're into your Ford Escorts, then that's cool. There's Zodiacs over here. Zodiacs. Zephyrs, all that good stuff. All that good stuff. Um, to be fair, I think there is a wide selection of European and classic cars here. Whatever you're into, you'll probably find it here. It's a pretty good showing for New Zealand. That was an Audi R8 that was starting up. I heard that V10 roar and I was wondering what that sound was. Quite intrigued by that actually. Okay, so if we go over here guys, if we come over here guys, what we're going to do is we're going to see the Jaguar section and there is a heap of Jaguars here, absolutely kitted out to a max of Jags. So we've got quite a few um, XK8s and R's and we've got this beautiful XJS V12 convertible, absolutely stunning in dark metallic blue with grey leather interior. What a car, what a car guys, what a beautiful machine. And 
Really nice car there. Just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. This is uh, this is a bit like Harry from Harry's garage. XJ six C. So this is the coupe version of the XJ six with a vinyl roof. Very nice. Um, can look at really just a only XJ coupe I think they ever made really. Well, other than maybe a few concept cars, but pretty good. There's just all these modernish Jaguars. Oh, here is a. Is this either a Mark X or a. Is it a Mark X? Or a. I forget what this one's called. It's a. Um, 420. So this is a Mark X or a 420. Essentially, they're the same car, I think. I'm sure there's some minor differences. I'm not entirely sure. There's a new one. So continue on here, past all the modern Jaguars. We get to see some more amazing cars, and right here is must. This must be, I think, the V12 Jaguar XS convertible. What a cool car that is! I love the black lights that they had. These dark light headlight, dark uh, tail lights that they had. They really finish it off and look really quite flash. Oh man! He's also. Now, if you're into your Jaguar E-types, well, this might be Jaguar E-type heaven because there seems to be every single Jaguar E-type in the New Zealand right now. Not quite, but there are certainly quite a few. All the Jaguar E-types. All the Jaguar E-types. From the Mark, the, the Series 1, 2 and 3. All the Jaguar E-types have turned out today. So. There's all sorts, they're all lovely cars, the quintessential British. Uh, I think this one here is of particular interest where it's a racing, Jaguar E-type racing car. It's a bit rarer, a bit more interesting, a little bit um, more different. Got bumper delete on the back, which is quite nice. So yes, those are the Jaguars. Now let's go and look at some more cars. Okay. So behind me we have something slightly interesting and slightly different. We have a Piaggio, which is I think an Italian sort of little uh, transport thing. And I think here it's being used as a coffee machine, mobile coffee. That sounds lovely. So we're going to go over here, guys, and we're going to look at Citroen, the French mark. And by goodness, they have a good showing of cars here. But before we get to Citroen, I think it's worth going back to Ford because there's three cars here that I think it's worth looking at. I'm not into my Fords hugely, but I think that for those people who are, this will be quite interesting. So these, I think, are Cortinas. And these, are, I think, might be conversions because this is a Corsair Crayford. And I'm assuming that this is a conversion. And look, for what was once a sedan, which they turned into a coupe, I think it looks absolutely magnificent. This is really, really quite special, actually. Apparently, this is another convertible. I don't know if a convertible is a factory. I don't know much about Cortina, but uh, interesting nonetheless. And I think this is really quite special. This is, for some reason, this has British registration plates on it. So, British registration, um, not entirely sure why but this is a Cortina estate of some description or Corsair it says it's a Corsair maybe the Corsair and the Cortina were quite similar cars it's got a it's a Corsair and a V4 and it's interesting because it sort of always has a boot lid on it so it has a little tiny little boot lid so it looks quite different from most cars pretty cool just wanted to mention that and just before we go over and look at the Citroëns I think it's also worth mentioning they have quite a few RS Fords here. So we've got the Focus RS, um, an RS 2000, the Focus, another Focus RS, the Sierra RS, of course, and perhaps my favourite because when I was growing up and it was part of uh, me growing up is this the uh, Ford Escort RS Cosworth in the early 90s. Homologation special. Of course, this is a Cosworth engine under the bonnet, which means that it's a racing engine. But yeah, really nice. It's a really nice car. Um, 
So Ford had to make this to comply with the rallying regulations, which meant they had to make a certain number of these before the place they could go rallying. Okay, so as promised, we're going to look at Citroen's next. So behind me is, of course, the Goddess, the DS, the, uh, the most famous uh, Citroen probably of them all. And next to them is a C6, so the most modern, uh, ran, uh, I guess, big Citroen. But lovely, and also that is a, is a trio of SMs. So these were the uh, luxury Maserati engine Citroen which was their range topping cars, quite rare, quite special. And to see three of them, I don't think I've ever seen three of them in a row, so amazing. And all the stuff under the water, all these green things are the hydraulic uh, bits of the engine. So, and as you can see, the engine says Maserati on it. Very cool, very, very cool. Very, very cool. <laughs> Absolutely spectacular. Maserati engines. Beauties. We continue over here, we're going to see a Safari DS Estate. What an amazing car! Amazing, another DS here. Around here, we have some awesome cars, absolutely fantastic. Fog cars, there's a BX Estate that's quite rare, quite interesting. We've got the ever-popular 2CV. Sips and Mahari. Very cool car. One very rare car. Um, absolutely fantastic. And over here we have a Volvo and a Renault and So we have this Although before we quite get there, I want to look at this, the Citroen Ami 8. This is such a cool car, really different, really unique. Um, Ami 6, sorry, I got back from the site wrong. The window slides, so that's really quite interesting. <laughs> they don't they don't roll down, they slide, so that's cool. And what a dinky little estate, little, oh, isn't it just the cutest? Absolutely beyond cute really that car there and what's this so we've got this interesting looking car it looks like it's rear engine it looks like it's a renault it's a renault florid flow ride flow ride okay this is a renault flow ride i'm assuming that's rear engine very cool you see that is an alpine uh, 610a probably a 610 Baldini, the new alpine that's really cool. Oh, we've got some old ones here. We've got a P1 Turbo. Interesting. But a, is this a R26? Okay. Which is for sale, apparently. If you wanted one such car. Continuing on, we have this very interesting and, I don't know, quite unique Renault 19 convertible. I feel that this is just sort of a bit of a unicorn. You don't, I mean, you come to a car show expecting, I guess, to see an Alpine, but a Renault convertible that you've probably never heard of. Uh, no, I haven't, I haven't more than expecting to see one of those. Got a Peugeot 404, looking very tough. 406, good okay, beautiful car. Um, the RCZ, interesting car. But, uh, Anyway, we've got a 505, we've got a 404, 504. If we continue around here, guys, let's continue over here. We have a pair of Volvo Amazons here, which is very cool. Very cool cars. And continuing on, we have Volvo. Lots of Volvos to see. Volvo 240, a Volvo 960. Um, this is of particular interest because it's a Volvo 850R. I think it's the 850R. Big engine, goes fast. Um, and then of course we've got some P1800s, which has to be seen as one of the most beautiful Volvos ever made. Beautiful lines, flowing lines. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's five, five of those, so that's pretty special to see. And right above us, if you look, we have a Spitfire going above. It's 
pretty cool. So we're doing some flybys of some planes today. So you don't get to see a Spitfire very often, but there's one right there, I think. So behind me we have some Porsches. Of course any good car event wouldn't be complete without a huge selection of Porsches. So we have some modern ones here. A 944, a quite nice uh, model quote although the blue payment in the background. I think that the thing that people come to see when they come to an event like this, when it comes to Porsches, is the old old yeah. cars and the original cars. This is a nice Targa. This is a Carrera. What kind of Carrera is this? Is this a special Carrera? Oh, it's a 73 Carrera, but nice. Look, there's all these old Porsches. Crown, you can see them. There's certainly an appeal to a Porsche and that they're old and original and they're the legend, I guess. Oh, well this is interesting. Yeah. So if you ever want to know what a Porsche engine looks like taking bits, here you go. Here you go, there's an interesting uh, Porsche engine. So that's what it looks like when it's taken to bits. It's got six cylinders, flat, horizontally opposed, like a, Volks, uh, like a Volkswagen or a Subaru or Ferrari. Uh, straight fat 12, but yeah, very cool. Very cool to see one taken apart. I've never seen one taken apart. I actually made a model of a Porsche engine back in high school um, for an experiment, uh, for a project where I was making an award. So that was pretty cool. Okay, so if we continue on here this way, we have the BMW section to have an M6 apparently. Then we have a 3 litre CSI. CSLs are very val valuable now, they can fetch well over $100,000. Very nice car, and a very nice car. This one has Alpine wheels, so that's really quite special, quite like the Alpine wheels on it. Looks that's pretty stunning. If we come around here, we have more M cars. Uh, I think that's an M3, modern M3. More BMWs and a whole host of the older marks, older models, the E30 are well represented here and very nice to see. This is for particular interest, I think this is an M3 CSL, so this is a rare one, very rare car. Um, that's pretty cool to see, pretty cool to see that there. And around here we have some E30s like I said, we've got an M3 there and another probably a couple of standard uh, E30s. So if we continue around here, we will see the Mercedes Benzes, the Benz collection, and there's quite a few nice ones. One I think is worth pointing out and noting walking over to is this a 1928 Mercedes Benz SSK. This is a real Mercedes Benz SSK, very, very valuable car and very, very rare car. Beautiful to see, very imposing, beautiful car. Absolutely lovely to see it out today. Well, look, if you come around here, you'll see the amazing aluminium turn dashboard, which is polished and just so nice and full of character. It's really, that's what coming to a car show like this is all about. It's about seeing the really special stuff. And I think another yeah, special thing that's worth mentioning, guys, is if we come over like this, here, is this beautiful Mercedes-Benz, I think it's a 280 uh, SE convertible. I'm not, I'm just guessing, but here it is, behind me here. Isn't this a spectacular and beautiful motor car? It's actually a 250 SE Cabriolet, so I was very close. I've got a, had a model of one of these, and I always thought it was one of the most stylish Mercedes-Benz models. Look at the dashboard, how it's absolutely shiny and beautiful and full of just class and elegance. Okay, so, there's also a 420 SE, which is really nice. 300 and another 350 yourselves for the old yourselves which are really really nice cars as well. Now if for those of you who are Volkswagen fans and I am one of those as of course they own a Volkswagen if you come over here you will see a Mercedes-Benz uh, 2000 Sprinter four-wheel drive and this actually looks like a bit of a motorhome so that's pretty cool. 
It's got a shower in it and everything. Wouldn't that be great to take on holiday? Absolutely fantastic. All the, all the room in the world, so it's quite roomy. And I think it's got uh, shine for four alloys on it. Now I know that Moses, my friend, wants to see some Volkswagen buses, so let's go on the buses. Here they are, Volkswagen buses. Um, these are the Type 2s, this is probably the, this is a West Failure, so this is about as original as they get here. Really cool, look at that 1970s carpet for good effect. That's so cool, very original. This would be fantastic to take camping. I couldn't imagine a better way to go camping actually than one of these. Absolutely spectacular. Just fantastic. All right, so if you follow me. So guys, if you follow me just a bit over here, we can look at some more Volkswagens and Audi products. Audi RS seems to have had quite a good representation this year at this show. I have to say that I have to, we just might have to look at these wheels. Damn. Those wheels. Wow. Definitely not getting ideas for my um, for my car. Sorry, I got quite excited because there was a very nice interior, very nice wheels on that Golf. Both will look great on my car. Anyway, moving on. So behind, sorry, behind me. Behind me, we have a great selection of RS and S cars from Audi. So we have four, in fact, I think we had five before, RS fours. So here is a selection of the first generation RS fours. Uh, then we have the second generation RS, an RS six. And I think it's an S six and an S eight. Now, if you follow me on, we will continue guys, we'll continue over here, we've got this beautiful Audi TT RS Coupe and beautiful Audi S8, spectacular, absolutely spectacular there, dark silver, wow, alright so we're just going to continue on over here, This is a very busy day, so you've got to keep watching out so you don't walk into someone. <laughs> so behind us here, right, is Rover and TVR. Now TVR has been known as a savage manufacturer of savage cars, but my goodness, they're quite awesome. So my mirror is here. Beautiful car. TVR, TVR, very cool cars. Bright colours and bright bright performance and also a bit of a reputation to basically want to kill you if you uh, step over the line but let's, let's continue around look TVR are no longer in production although they're having a bit of a supposedly having a startup again but they haven't produced any cars yet and I've been having a startup I think in the past last five years so who knows when they're going to start producing cars again Anyway, behind the TVRs, of which they are really cool. Um, in previous events, I've come here and there's been a Cigaris and a Tuscan. So there's none of those here today, unfortunately. But that's the other thing about a car show, is that each year, it changes. Cars change hands, people don't turn up, and then people do turn up. So every time you come along to these, you'll see new and different and exciting cars. So behind those cars here, is some Lotus Elises. Now Lotus have just actually cancelled the Lotus Elise as of 2021. So those are now dying now and this is one of the, this I believe is Lotus Exige um, because it's a hard top with the silver bits. That's quite cool. So this is more of an Elise. Racing one, this one is here. Yes it is an Exige, I have got the name correct. That's good. Beautiful car. Absolutely stunning. 
Okay, so behind that, guys, is some more beautiful roses. Um, we've got these lotus, lotus, yeah, this is lotus shell. Looks a bit like an Osprey, but it isn't. The lotus land front engine sports car, later made by Kia. Very different to me, mate. Here is a lotus on your Europa. Very interesting. Now, Perhaps the creme de la creme of Lotus is going to be the Esprit. That's the quintessential supercar, which they made for, I think it was a good 30 odd years or so. About 1973 till about 2001 or two or something. This is probably an S2 model, is it? I'm going to guess. No, it's an Esprit V8 GT, so it wasn't quite there. This has got a big V8. This is actually the, the big daddy of them all. It's the one thing about uh, these cars is they were known for unreliability with their gearbox because I think it's only a Renault 21 gearbox, so those weren't the best. But anyway, moving on guys, Aston Martin. Now of particular interest and note here today is this absolutely stunning, beautiful black Vanquish. Now while these aren't worth a whole lot on the used market, they look fantastic. Fantastic. It's still one of my personal favourite Aston Martins. I just wait like the way this thing looks, how imposing and beautiful it is. It's a stunning car. Now, this and at the end, so we've got a Vantage DB7 V12, a Virage, Vantage S, yes. another Vantage, and then at the end we have, I think, it's very cool, pointy D. He apparently has two fuel fillers, so if this car he used so much petrol, you could fill it up on either side so you could fill it up from here or here. But what a cool car it is, guys. What an absolutely fantastic car it is, and another amazing car to see. Here we are at the front of this Aston Martin DBS. You can tell the DBS because of this front here. Now the very first DBSs were actually six cylinders. They had the six cylinder from the DB6, but the later, later DBSs had the V8. Now, we will continue on further. So behind us now is the Reliant section, and Reliant made sports cars, and here is a Reliant Skimmer. This must be a Reliant Skimmer V6. Another Reliance Skimmer, very interesting cars. Um, apparently, according to Jeremy Clarkson, Princess had Princess Princess Anne had one, you know. So that's good to know. Now we're going to continue on, guys, um, because it's so interesting to look at all the other cars. Um, we've got some Austins here. So Austins. Um, I don't know a lot about Austins, but there's some here. They are quite cool. Uh, I can't really talk about these as much as all the other cars because I don't copy them. Um, but what I can tell you about is these rare cars over here. So let's go into the tent and have a look. Oh my goodness, look at this. Okay, so this is an AC Ace Bristol, which is a beautiful British sports car. Very rare. Okay, so BMW, believe it or not, uh, after the war, the rights of their vehicles were bought by a British mark called Bristol, which is why this car does actually look a little bit like a BMW. Um, except it's not a BMW, it's a very luxurious English car. But yes, if you ever thought why these cars here look like BMWs, it's because of that. So that's really very interesting quite as well. Um, behind you is an Arnott. I don't know much about them, but they're interesting cars. And there's an Allard there. So, you know, quite a few interesting rare cars here. And I think that this one here was a Fraser Nash, another English sports car manufacturer. Now, into this here, we have some other beautiful cars. So we have some Porsche 356s, 
And we have a Mercedes SL and he would have got this DV2, DV2, special, interesting, absolutely lovely car. It has Tickford coach work, so that's quite interesting. And just look at the interior. It's absolutely lovely. That. It's been obviously restored very recently because it was brand spanking new. Brand spanking new. Very, very nice. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Ooh. Okay, so. Hi guys, so behind us we have a selection of Marcos. And Marcos was a mark that made kit cars and sports cars, a bit like TDRs, I guess. This one here is probably quite evocative of that because it's the uh, it's the Mantula and it's a V8, the V8, and that's quite interesting. That one right there. And if we continue on to this car, this, which is. This is a really interesting car. So this is an NSU Road 80. It came in, I think it was 1967 or 1968. Now what was interesting about this car was that it was supposed to be revolutionary. It was very forward thinking when it came out. There was one huge Achilles heel, which was the engine. It had a rotary engine. So many of you might think that Mazda came up with the idea of a rotary engine car. They did not, it was NSU. NSU Prince Roadster was the first thing, it was about 1963, and this followed that, however, Rotary engines are not known for their reliability or longevity and that was certainly the case in the 19, late 1960s when this car came out and they are not the most reliable cars out there. Um, but in saying that, other than that, it is a very nice car, very modern, sharp, rear, very interesting, just cool and it's got such a tiny engine because of course it's a rotary, it's all the way down there, low and small and Compact, what a fantastic thing. Right, well, we're almost at the end of the show, but we'll continue on one moment. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can you pause it for a minute? I'm dead ends a break. Hello, and now we're looking at Opal. Opal is quite a rare mark in New Zealand, but here we have some very rare cars. We actually have an Opal Commodore, of all things. Commodore is, of course, a car that we would most notably know in New Zealand as the Holden Commodore. And even though Opal and Holden are basically the same company, because there were so many rebadged, Holden, rebadged Opals as Holden, this was not, I think, ever sold as a Holden in New Zealand or Australia. That's quite interesting. Now there's these Mantra things here as well behind us. So these are a, both quite interesting. We have the VX220 or Opal Speedster. Oh, it is a Speedster. I think that's right. Here we go. Oh, it's quite interesting too. And yeah, just really, really cool cars. Really cool to see. Yeah. Okay, and if we continue over here, guys, if we continue over here, go past the box, we will go and look at the last interesting, the last of the line cars that we see today. Um, actually, over here is quite interesting. So, talking about that rebadged Opal mentality. Here is this. So this is actually not a Holden, even though it is a Holden, but it's badged as a Vauxhall. Officially badged as a Vauxhall. Because it was sold in the UK, being clearly imported at some point. That's quite interesting. So here it is on the front. Vauxhall. Okay. That's really interesting. All right, so we've almost come to the end of the day. Um, there's one more mark I want to show you, and that's Morgan. So if we go this way, we'll look at Morgan, then we're going to head home, and that'll be it for the day. So we're going to walk past some more voxels. Um, this one's quite interesting. I don't know what it is, but it's the biggest sedan. It almost reminds me of the Leyland T76, but it probably isn't. Is it Cresta? Voxel Cresta? Okay. 
Represented. My um, father's friend had one and they were very cool cars, so really nice to see those. And I actually think these are free new ones. Wow, plus six. So these, believe it or not, all these cars here are brand new, basically. So these are all new, um, all 2020. So even though they look like that one right there, which is from the 1970s, they haven't changed a lot. In fact, they haven't changed at all, really. These are slightly more modern, though. Slightly more modern. But look, that's the thing I like about Morgan, is that they keep making this classic sports car. But these ones are modern. These are brand new cars. Which might, you might not believe, but this is a brand new car. This is made in 2020. From the factory, you can buy it like this. And it's got this quite it's got a slightly more modern interior it's oh it's look it's got a bmw gearbox because that's a bmw guest stick so that's quite interesting and that's the interesting about morgan is that you've got this brand new one right here and then you can go back to 1989 so this is going back to 1989 and look here's a 1989 morgan and it looks almost exactly the same but the interior of course is completely different what an interesting little change there. Alright. So, and here we have yet another Morgan, and this Morgan here must be a later Morgan because it's got a more modern interior. But look at the interior changes now. This is actually 2004 with a Land Rover 4 litre V8. So it's got a Land Rover engine on it, so that's also quite interesting. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Andy from Andy Lights Cars and uh, I hope you enjoyed looking around the 2021 British and European Car Show here in Howick in Auckland. It's been a great day and you'll join me again soon where tonight I'm actually going to the Supercar Show which is a fundraising event for a charity here in New Zealand. So I'll make a video about that as well. But for now, goodbye. Please like, share and subscribe to the video or comment or hit that bell notification icon, do whatever you feel like you'd like to do.